Welcome to Recharge here at St. Andrews. I am glad that you are here as you're making your way into the sanctuary. And welcome to those of you who are worshiping online with us as well. For those of you who are worshiping online, we are celebrating the sacrament of communion as we always do. And I do encourage you to gather some bread, some wine, or some grape juice so you can participate as well. And please know that you're welcome to worship here in person whenever that works for you. Any Sunday morning at 9 o'clock or Wednesdays, like tonight, at 6 o'clock. You're always welcome. For those of you in the sanctuary, again, welcome to, to you. Glad that you're here and that we can join in singing. Everything that you need will be projected in front of you. But a few announcements before we do begin. Uh, I want to give thanks to Angie and Barry Olson and uh, Jean and Ken Warren for providing our meal this evening. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, there's also a sign-up and information for any of you who would consider uh, hosting a meal in the weeks to come. There's information again and a sign-up on the kiosk. Tomorrow, those of you who are, uh, what should I call it, more seasoned people around here, there is the reconstitution of the rascals, the group for our seasoned people here. Uh, if you're interested, it used to be a monthly gathering for a meal and discussion or a program. Uh, if you're interested in doing that again or being part of the groundwork, uh, tomorrow evening, is a potluck, not a catered dinner like they've been in the past, but this first one, a potluck. Set up is at 4 o'clock. Meal and discussion is at 5 o'clock. This Sunday is the day, not only that the Chiefs and the 49ers play, but it is the day for you to pick up your pizzas that you so generously ordered from the youth of the congregation going to the ELCA youth gathering. So that's this Sunday. Also, I would invite any of you to come and join in the fun and the chaos of making 280 pizzas on Saturday. We begin at 9 a.m. Um, we have such a small group going to the youth gathering, so we're looking for uh, additional help. Thank you for supporting the youth the congregation. All right, turning to worship again. Uh, praise team, if you come forward at this point in time, uh, I want to introduce the praise team on drums, Ben Maurer, on piano, Cheryl Young, uh, working around that way. Joe Shade is on guitar and vocals. Amber Jackson, uh, vocals. And joining us, debuting with us, is Avery Schultz on vocals. Avery is one of our confirmation students <laughs> with her own built-in fan club. Her small group from Confirmation. That's awesome. We love Avery. Yes, hold it up. Hold it up. Um, finally, uh, no matter where you are, where you happen to be on your journey of life and faith, I want you to know that you are always welcome here at St. Andrews, just as you are always welcomed into the loving embrace of Jesus Christ. And with that, I invite you to stand. We're going to start singing some songs. You're going to see, see images in our songs or hear images. Go ahead, stand. You're going to hear images in our songs of Jesus being lifted. We're going to hear images of Jesus being light as we are focusing this week on the transfiguration of Jesus.
gonna see, we're gonna see Jesus lifted high. And we are here to worship that one who was lifted high, not only on the Mount of Transfiguration, but on the cross and ascended also if, as we get that whole story. We are here to worship the lifted one. of the world, we are here to worship you. Shine brightly in our lives. Shine brightly in your world. Shine brightly through us, your church, your people, into the world, into the dark places of the world. Use us as your presence to others. Make yourself known to us tonight. Amen. Please be seated. And Tim, we continue with the Bible reading. The reading tonight, this evening, comes from the book of Mark, chapter 9, verses 2 through 9. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became a dazzling bright, such as no one on earth could brighten them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us set up three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. 
Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Whoa. You may want to take me down just a little bit. Have you heard of the concept of thin places? The ancient Celtics believe that there are places where the realm of the here and now is really close to the realm of the hereafter or the realm of the forever. It's that place where those two get close. It's that boundary between heaven and earth, if you will, and that boundary is really, really thin. These are the places where we can sense the divine, perhaps more so than we usually can. They're places where we might be able to catch a glimpse, a glimpse of God, even if only momentarily. They're places where we might see and experience heaven, the dimension of heaven, even while we are still very much living and breathing in this world today. The places where the veil, and I'm quoting somebody here, I wish I could remember who, where the veil between this world and the next are so sheer, is so sheer, that we can at least sort of see through it. It seems to me that this idea of thin places might help us understand what's going on in that strange story Tim just read this evening, the story of the transfiguration or the transformation of Jesus on the mountain. So Jesus and three of his closest friends go hiking up a mountain. And when they get to the top, Jesus suddenly starts glowing, shining brightly. And suddenly a couple of historical figures show up we got Moses and Elijah. You might remember that Moses received, and this is important for our confirmation students, since this is what we're studying. Moses received the Ten Commandments from God on a mountain top. He had an encounter with God that was surrounded by uh, smoke and fire and lightning and thunder. But that mountain, that mountain was a thin place. And Elijah, too, experienced God on the mountaintop. Now, he didn't experience God in the earthquake or the thunder or the fire. Elijah experienced God in that thin place, in the sound of silence. That mountain was a thin place. And here we have Jesus on a mountain with Moses and Elijah, both of whom had already had an experience with God. Oh, maybe they're having an experience with God again, huh? You think so? But they've already had an experience with God in the thin place of a mountain. Jesus shines. The voice of God speaks out, this is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. The veil between this world and the, la and the next was so sheer, so thin, that the disciples, Peter, James, and John, caught a glimpse of the forever. That mountain was a thin place. And then it's over. <laughs> It's over. <laughs> Jesus stops shining. The voice doesn't say anything else. Moses and Elijah disappear. <laughs> and Jesus and his friends hike back on down the mountain. Thin places. I'm wondering... And this is rhetorical, you don't have to answer. But I'm wondering if you've experienced any. 
Sometimes they are literal places where God, where you feel that God is somewhat closer to you than you usually experience, or that you're able at least to sense or perceive that closeness of God. And it might be a mountaintop. There are reasons we call them mountaintop experiences. One of my favorite places on earth is Holden Village. Up in the Cascade Mountains of Washington State. I was there for four weeks last summer while I was on sabbatical. For me, it's a holy place. It's a thin place for me. Where I'm aware of, where I, where I see or perceive and feel God's presence probably more, I don't know if intensely is the word, but more prominently than I, than I do elsewhere. Oh, there might be another thin place too that comes to the top of my list. It's, it's the Boundary Waters area canoe wilderness, the BWCA. We've got the great outdoors, the serenity of nature, maybe starlit skies. I don't stay up very late, so I don't usually see those. Maybe the northern lights dancing. That might be a thin place for you. Thin places might be more of an experience than a physical location. One thin place that comes to mind that I'm privileged to encounter from time to time is surrounding a time of death. As someone passes from the arms of their loved ones into the arms of Jesus. Thin places, sometimes, not always, but sometimes it seems that the dying person sees something that I do not. <laughs> they might begin to reach up or reach out. They might begin at least seem to begin to talk to someone <laughs> that you know has already died. <laughs> My mom did that. Sometimes someone would say, I see angels. That's a thin place. That's a holy time. On the other end of the life spectrum, birth. Birth seems to be a holy time, a holy place, a thin place when it seems that heaven itself is rushing into our present. And then shortly after birth, it seems to me that babies and toddlers sometimes seem to experience thin places. I remember my, one of my own kids, Katie, she's here now. Sorry. They, I warned her, you know, through, the, through her, whatever, 28 years of life, she's come up in sermons a few times. It's just part of being a pastor's kid. But I remember, and Gail, I don't remember the perfect details, but I think she was in her high chair. And she was looking at something. She was captivated by something. She was gazing at something. She was pointing or reaching out to something. She was giggling at something. Something that I couldn't see. I wonder. I wonder if that was a thin place. I wonder if our young ones and if our dying older ones experience thin places, I think, think, I think thin places happen. And I submit to you that they probably happen more frequently, prevalently than we normally think they do. That we just don't notice. The veil between the heavenly dimension and the earthly dimension 
Man, it's, it's thin. I often say that God is as close as our breath. That's pretty thin. That's pretty imminent. I think we just need to be open to it. And to expect it. To anticipate it. And I think this story of the transfiguration of Jesus might just be a reminder for us. The transfiguration comes at a pivotal point in the gospel story. Jesus is about to head to Jerusalem where he will be arrested and tortured and killed. Just before the transfiguration, he shared all that with his disciples. And just after the transfiguration, he's going to share it again. Indeed, he'll share it a third time with them. The journey that lies ahead for Jesus and for his disciples, his disciples who are told to take up their cross, his disciples who are told that whoever wants to be first among you must be last of all and servant of all. His disciples who are told that the cup that I drink, you will drink. And the baptism with which I am baptized, this is Jesus speaking now, you will be baptized with the same. The journey ahead for Jesus and the disciples will not be easy. And maybe at a moment like that, what Jesus needed and what the disciples needed also was a glimpse, a glimpse of the glory of God, a glimpse of the big picture, a glimpse of what God was up to in Jesus, a reminder that God was with them and that God was for them. And maybe, maybe in the midst of the difficult days that we live, in the midst of the difficulties of our lives, we too need that reminder that God is with us and that God is for us. Maybe we need moments of clarity in the darkness of our lives to help us take that next step kind of a squirrel moment here, but I want uh, an image that I want to give you. Uh, I want you to think about a, bit, a summer thunderstorm. It's night. It's a big storm. The wind is howling. It's dark, dark, dark. You hear the thunder. It's kind of scary. You can't see anything because the power is out. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, in a flash, there is brilliant light, as bright as if the sun itself were shining for a nanosecond. And you see everything, and you see it clearly. Clarity. Clarity. The big picture. Everything clear and lit up. Transfiguration. May you may we experience thin places to bring us clarity about Jesus. And may we experience thin places to give us the courage, the courage to take the next step, the next faithful steps with Jesus. Following Jesus back down the mountain, back to the life that Jesus calls us to. And that's a life of feeding the hungry and healing the sick. A life of serving those in need and sharing God's love. A life of welcoming and including everyone, no exceptions. A life of being in the presence of Jesus, but a life of being the presence of Jesus to people all around us. Hmm. Which means you and I can be thin places for others. Amen. This next song is... Uh, 
what I like to say is, it's an old song. <laughs> we love Avery. <laughs> it's an old song, meaning it was written in 2005, but it's the first time we've sung it at Recharge Worship. All right, enough of the science. Down you go. Uh, but I do invite you to stand as we sing, You Never Let Go.
Please join together in this prayer of confession. God, we confess to you that there are times that we miss what you want to reveal to us. We don't perceive those thin places where heaven and earth are right there together. We don't see your glory. Forgive us. God, we confess to you that though you tell us to listen to Jesus, there are so many other voices and messages that we listen to more. Forgive us. God, we confess to you that though you call us to follow you into the valleys of the world to serve others, we want to stay on the mountaintop with you. Forgive us. Jesus told Peter, James, and John not to tell, not to tell of what they had experienced on the mountain until after Jesus had been raised. But because that's already happened, we can tell what we have seen and heard of God's glory. And here's the good news. Jesus lives. Jesus is raised, and we are forgiven. So go tell the world that God never lets go. We're going to sing that chorus one more time. Do, do. Oh, no, you never let go through the calm and through the storm. Oh, no, you never let go in every high and every low. Oh, no, you never let go. Lord, you never let go of me. God, we give you thanks that you never let go of us. And sometimes we need those thin places in the world to remind us of that, to remind us that you're right there holding us always. And we need the reminder, God, that you want to work through us to be those thin places for others, to remind them that you're there, that you never let go of them either. God, may we be used by you to be agents of your peace in the world. Oh, we continue to cry out for peace in the conflict, in the war, in the killings between Israel and Gaza. We continue to cry out for peace, for cessation of hostilities between Russia and Ukraine. And God, we pray for those who are in harm's way and have been in harm's way of what we may call natural disasters, the floods, the rains, the storms. Inspire your people to, to reach out with compassion, to reach out with dollars to make a difference in people's lives. God, we pray for the health and healing of, uh, of everyone that we're aware of that is in need of that. We pray for those who are in need of your healing touch emotionally and spiritually and physically. God, we pray for the leaders of the nations, that they would be instruments of peace and justice and mercy for all. We pray for the leaders of our nation in particular and our state. Make them agents of good for all. And God, we pray for your church on earth, for us gathered here, but the, the church universal that we would be that thin place for others, that we would proclaim not only your glory on the mountaintop, but that you accompany us in the valleys as well. Inspire us to live for you. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, eat. This is my body. It is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sin as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Those of you serving communion, come forward and get ready at this time. Uh, this is also the time for those of you worshiping at home to gather your bread and your wine. Go ahead and eat that bread as you hear these words, the body of Christ given for you. And taking the wine or grape juice, drink it as you hear these words, the blood of Christ shed for you. For those of you in the sanctuary, you are all invited to receive the true presence of Jesus in bread and wine or grape juice. There will be two stations at the front of the center aisle. Everyone's invited to come down the center aisle. When you get to the front, you'll have the opportunity to take a small piece of bread, or we also have gluten-free crackers. Go ahead and eat that. Then you'll have the opportunity to take a small glass of either red wine or white grape juice. Go ahead and drink that. Place your empty cups in the wooden bowls and continue back to your places by way of these inside angled aisles. Everyone is welcome at this holy meal. We stand for the blessing. And now may the blessing of God and the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace and his truth and his life now and forever. Amen. Final song is Shine, Jesus, Shine, keeping that theme of light and shining and glowing of Jesus.
peace. Serve the Lord. Shine, Jesus, shine.